Everybody, JB. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here today. I'm really excited uh, to be to share with you with this, this fantastic technology, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, as you said, I come from Tokyo, and uh, I uh, I hope you will enjoy. Uh, I would like to thank the organization for this incredible opportunity. Uh, so thanks to them also. So I'm Jean-Baptiste Dominguez. I have been engineering lead uh, and led the wallet team at Bitcoin.com. Uh, blockchain technology, especially Bitcoin Cash, has so much to offer. Uh, the reason why I want to share it with you today. So first of all, I will define what is Bitcoin Cash, who are the actors, and how to interact with them. Then I will introduce what is a wallet and its best practices using Swift. So what is Bitcoin Cash? Uh, it's a decentralized public ledger, no middleman, public, public database. Uh, you can send instantly, uh, a, uh, instantly a transaction without any third party. Uh, it's a blockchain, so it's immutable. Nobody can change the ledger or it's difficult. Uh, and it's relying on mathematic proofs. Uh, Bitcoin Cash has a is a fork of Bitcoin, so the block generation is based on proof of work. So Bitcoin Cash uh, has two specific characteristics. Uh, and uh, the first one is zero conf. So it provides the ability of instant payment. Uh, one of the greatest features, uh, fantastic for shop and businesses. So you don't need to wait having a, your transaction in a block as Bitcoin Core uh, or others uh, to confirm the payment uh, if it's in the memory pool. Uh, fee is really low and the miners uh, do not prioritize any transaction depending on the fee. So the minimum is one Satoshi per byte. Uh, you can send one million to a person uh, in France in a second for less than a penny. So there are several actors in Bitcoin Cash. Uh, first, the full nodes uh, store all the blockchain, verify every single transaction to make sure they are legit and compliant with the Bitcoin Cash rules. Uh, the full node will interact with other nodes uh, for, from the network and propagate the blocks and transactions. Then we have the miners, uh, who will solve the mathematic problem uh, and create blocks with the transaction contained in the memory pool. So the memory pool is a waiting room for the, for the transactions that have not yet been in a block. Uh, they will wait until a miner includes them in a block. Uh, finally, uh, the light nodes uh, will have a similar role uh, as a, a full node, but it will uh, not verify every single transaction, but only the block header and provide an SPV uh, called uh, Simple Payment Verification uh, by a Merkle proof. Uh, so Merkle tree is really a fundamental data structure in blockchain technology. So I advise you to have a look at it uh, to have a better understanding of light nodes. So then uh, when you are building a wallet or an app running a wallet, uh, you will need to make this choice. Either you rely on a backend that we can call as well Insight uh, what will index the data uh, for you and provide uh, the data that you need potentially in one network call, uh, or you will use a light node inside of your app. It will require more bandwidth and time to sync with the network uh, each time your client starts the app instead of having a backend uh, letting you know what happened uh, the time you were offline. Uh, each solution has its pros and cons. Uh, it's up to you. I want to give a quick shout out to Katsumi Kishikawa and uh, the Yenom team. They built a fantastic library named Bitcoin Kit that allows you uh, to make all the operations uh, that you need uh, to manage a wallet in your app. Uh, it will allow you uh, to run uh, your wallet with a light node as well. So a huge milestone for the Bitcoin Cash community. So thanks to them. So what is a wallet? Uh, a wallet is no more than a private key. Uh, that will allow you to provide a signature to prove uh, that you are the owner of the funds. So based on asymmetric encryption, uh, you can generate a public key from your private key. Uh, this public key will allow people to verify the authenticity of your signature. Uh, in order to receive funds, uh, we will apply a formatting strategy uh, with hash functions uh, to have a specific representation of your public key. We call it an address. Uh, therefore, uh, you can apply different, uh, different strategies uh, depending on the coin that you, you want to receive. Uh, it will provide the ability for a wallet to understand uh, by reading your address which coin you are trying to send or receive and on which network, like MyNet or TestNet. So it means you can receive any coin on the same public key. Your single private key will have the ability to sign transaction on any coin that you may receive. 
So a transaction uh, has one or multiple inputs or outputs, uh, only the genesis of the first transaction in a block uh, named Coinbase transaction, providing the rewards to the miners will not have inputs. Otherwise, in your case, think that you will always have minimum one input. We call UTXO uh, non-spend uh, transaction uh, output uh, that we, uh, oh, sorry. Problem technical. Uh, oh, okay, well. uh, we so we have like uh, uh, we have the UTXO, an unspent transaction uh, output because the output can be used only once as an input. So an input or U uh, UTXO, uh, if it has not been yet uh, spent, is defined by a takes ID, indicates the transaction ID where it was previously uh, an output. There is an index indicate the position as an output uh, in the previous transaction. Uh, the script signature will unlock the font depending on the locking script that we will see later in this presentation. And we have also the value, very important for the developer, because uh, the fee is calculated like this. So it will be the sum of the inputs minus the sum of the outputs. So it means if uh, you uh, don't calculate right the difference, uh, you could lose funds. So we will uh, call this uh, a specific output, like we can call change, uh, that you will create to get this change. Uh, so in the output, the output is, uh, uh, we'll have the same thing, like you will have the index, so the index in the, uh, in the output list. You will have the value uh, that you want, the amount that you want to send. And the locking script will be important. It will define the condition, the spendable condition uh, of your output. So we can call it also, uh, it will define also so your smart contract. Now we have the basic definition. We will talk about best practices. Uh, there is some best practices named BIPs uh, for Bitcoin improvement proposals. Uh, anyone can submit a proposal and it will be approved by the community. Uh, these BIPs allow us uh, to keep consistent and compatible the wallets. Uh, it helps us to improve security and user experience. So let's jump on some of them. So the BIP39 uh, talks about mnemonic. So a mnemonic is a list of words that will allow your user to back up and restore his wallet really easily and safely. Uh, there is a list of 2,048 words. Uh, it will randomly pick 12 words. Uh, so these words will be used to generate your seed, so your private key. These 12 words will need to be stored in a safe place. It's the most important thing that you need to care about. Uh, sure, you need to keep safe as well your private key, but I think it makes sense. Uh, you can as well increase the amount of words. Uh, it will, uh, if you would like to improve the security by increasing the entropy. So if you would like to have more details on it, I invite you to have a, li uh, a look at the BIP spec. So the BIP32 uh, was a huge milestone for crypto wallet. It's the introduction of hierarchical deterministic wallet named as well HD wallet. Uh, it will introduce uh, the notion of derivation pass and master private key. So why master? Uh, because the, the, this private key now can derive uh, several child key, child private keys uh, using a derivation function. Uh, it will introduce the idea about level and pass. Therefore, if you're a company uh, and have branches or departments, you can now uh, separate per account, for example, by using de different derivation paths. Uh, so you can uh, separate per account, for example. Uh, you will keep the same master private key. Uh, it contributes to anonymize uh, your transactions as well by generating a new private key, so a new address each time you want to receive money, so a huge milestone in privacy as well. So the BIP33 uh, and the BIP44 complete the BIP32 uh, with a proposal level. So here is a quick sum up uh, of these uh, three BIPs. Uh, so it indicates uh, to the user which standard, which standard you are following in your app. So it will make your wallet compatible with, with, with others. Uh, so you can observe uh, that uh, an apostrophe is used for hardened derivation that I will talk in the next slides. Uh, here is how to generate a mnemonic and a master private key uh, with Bitcoin Kit in Swift. It's really important to keep this list uh, of string uh, in a safe place. Uh, I repeat it again. Uh, furthermore, in Bitcoin Kit, you have HD private key and public key. Uh, what are the extend uh, key types? 
Uh, as I said before, an extend private and public key is a key including metadata. Uh, so the fact that I use an HD private key here, uh, it provides me the ability to generate child keys uh, in order to follow the standard BIP44. So here is how we can generate uh, a child keys using Bitcoin Kit. So I use uh, the coin path 145, what is the standard for Bitcoin Cash. Uh, as I said before, we can have exactly the same private key uh, for multiple coins. So we will use, uh, we will apply a different uh, derivation function to make sure we not, uh, mix uh, the coins. Uh, so, or for example, 245 for SLP token. So it's a token based on Bitcoin Cash that I will introduce later. Uh, however, to the ability to derive a branch of public key comes with potential risk. Uh, there is an alternative derivation function called Ardenot derivation, which breaks the relationship between the parent public key and the chain code. Because the derivation function will use the private key instead of the public key as input. So if someone gets access to a child private key and the parent extend public key, it will not allow to go backwards and deduce the parent private key or the other child private keys. So you will add one layer in security for your users. So this Ardenet derivation is only available with the extend private key for sure. So here is how to generate, uh, so here I generate my first address. Uh, as, I, as you understood, I don't use Ardenet derivation. It's part of the B44 uh, standard and we provide the ability to discover these addresses using the extend public key. In my backend use case, for example, if I would like to uh, send, for example, uh, uh, a notification for a transaction that uh, uh, my user will receive, uh, I can share this extend public key uh, in a safe way to my backend to be able to listen and to have a wallet read-only uh, and uh, to be able to provide a notification to my user, for example, it's like that works uh, the wallets. The locking script uh, will define the spendable condition of an output, uh, so my smart contract. Uh, here is the three basic scripts. Uh, the, the two first ones uh, will be used uh, for having spendable, spendable outputs. Uh, and the null data uh, is a non-spendable output. Uh, it's used to attach data to a transaction. So one basic use case is token in Bitcoin Cash uh, named SLP, token that I mentioned before. Uh, each transaction will have an output containing metadata, for example, and describing the token behavior. Uh, you could imagine that also with IPFS, for example. Uh, so the opcode is a script language uh, providing by the Bitcoin Cash blockchain, but also by Bitcoin also, uh, Bitcoin Core, uh, to write your locking script. Uh, so you have several opcodes to write your smart contract. But for example, in Bitcoin Cash, you have some uh, more uh, opcodes. Uh, like uh, there is new opcode introduced in the hard fork uh, in November 2018, uh, like the op check data sig and the op check data sig verify. Uh, it provides the ability to combine signatures and oracles. Uh, so external data, so it's really a huge milestone for smart contract in Bitcoin Cash. So here is how to make uh, a P2PKH with Bitcoin Kit. However, you have a method with an address as parameter, as you can see below, so it will generate it for you. Uh, all the basic smart contracts are already implemented for you in Bitcoin Kit. Here is an example of null data uh, script. So the opcode, uh, op return, will make your output uh, invalid directly, so unspendable. Uh, then you can add your metadata. Uh, I wrote uh, a string, uh, thank you, Trace with New York 2019, for example, that you can see in the block explorer. So this message will stay forever in the blockchain, for example. Uh, if you would like to write a new protocol uh, using metadata, uh, I invite you to read the spec where I describe some best practices uh, with the op uh, written. Uh, so here is uh, an example uh, of protocol leveraging new data. So simple ledger protocol or SLP uh, allows you to tokenize virtual gaming assets, licenses, digital media, media rights, gift cards and company stock shares and all that you could imagine. Uh, furthermore, you inherit Bitcoin Cash advantages so scalability, cheap transaction, zero conf. So I have met already companies trying to move away from ERC20 and today SLP is the way to go. 
So SLP tokens are already shown in exchanges, for example, where you can trade uh, uh, SLP tokens, so Bitcoin Cash tokens. Uh, so I really encourage you to reach out the link below and check out the specification. Uh, I, uh, in complementary to Bitcoin Kit, I'm currently working on iOS SDK for easily integrating SLP token in your app, and hopefully it will be released really soon and people could start integrating tokens in the application. So I was really happy to share with you this fantastic and powerful technology. Uh, today, almost all the lib are there uh, to provide great products, uh, instant payment, zero conf, low fee, uh, token as SLP, uh, SLP uh, so the sim simple ledger protocol. Uh, so provide great opportunity for go governments and businesses to use Bitcoin Cash. For example, there is a, a state in America where they, uh, they uh, start using SLP token. It's like really crazy, but <laughs> it's like really nice. And uh, SLP tokens start to be really used in the real world. So it's not only uh, for geeks. <laughs> And uh, simple ledger protocol allow you to create like your own fungible or non-fungible tokens. So what is, uh, for example, an awesome opportunities? So that here is some references that I use for this uh, presentation. And uh, so thank you very much. And I would like to finish this presentation with a special announcement. So I have been working on a project. So today I want to announce officially a first public beta of Oni Points. So you may have tested already by getting some try swift points during the, the event via Twitter, maybe. And uh, so Oni Points uh, allows you to create your own point system uh, to reward your most loyal clients, to motivate your employees, or to appreciate your friends. So Oni Points like make your points having an actual value in a free market. And uh, Oni Points empower businesses and individuals to retain their customers through a crypto currency reward token. So create your own to cryptocurrency token in, your, in our app and build your own point system today. So thank you very much, and I hope you appreciate it. <laughs>